I am James Swanick. Hope you have a great 2021. How do you socialize alcohol free? How do you have fun without alcohol? How do you handle social situations where friends or colleagues or bosses or family members are pressuring you to have a drink? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode. Uh, just a little context. It's uh, As I'm recording this now, it's the first week of January. I uh, hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and holiday period. I spent time with family over on Stradbroke Island, which is an island off the east coast of Australia. We had 31 family members there of aunts and uncles and cousins and kids and nieces and nephews and mums and dads. Uh, it was fabulous until the final day when 13 of us got a gastro something or other bug, stomach bug, and uh, I found myself <laughs> vomiting uncontrollably uh, all afternoon on the Sunday. In fact, uh, my partner and I uh, had just got off the ferry, which transports cars from Stradbroke Island over to the mainland on Brisbane in the suburb of, uh, of Kapalapa, and we were driving home to where we live in East Brisbane, and about a mile from my house, I couldn't handle it anymore, and I said um, to my partner, Juliana, pull over. And on the side of the road, uh, we pulled over and... Uh, I projectiled all over the Brisbane motorway. It wasn't a very pleasant sight. Um, the last time something like that happened was exactly 10 years earlier when I got food poisoning on the evening of uh, the Super Bowl back in New York in 2000. I think it was 2010 or 2011. I'm not sure the exact year, but it's a long time ago. I very, very rarely get sick. Um, but I got sick on this occasion. How's that for a pleasant introduction to the podcast? <laughs> Here to talk about how to socialize without alcohol and I'm conjuring up an image of me vomiting on the highway. Um, anyway, that was a real wake-up call for me to uh, just take better care of myself because while I generally eat well and exercise well, over that Christmas period, I didn't eat as well. You know, friends and family, they bring food and there's lots of sugary treats and I indulged. I didn't have alcohol, obviously. I haven't drunk since 2010, but I did indulge. And I'm not saying that that's what led me to get the, the stomach bug because, you know, obviously someone had it and just pa passed it around. But, you know, as I was, once I finally got home and then was now vomiting in the bathroom <laughs> in the safety of my home, you know, in that moment, I was like, I never want to eat again, <laughs> full stop. But more than that, when 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 I realized that was ridiculous, it was I never want to eat crap food again. I always want to eat healthy and make healthy choices. And, uh, you know, subsequently since then, as I'm recording this, it's the first week of January. It's January 4. Uh, and it's been a week since I was I was ill. I, I've eaten only organic food and I've drunk only filtered water and uh yeah i've taken care of myself and i feel infinitely better so just to i mean i just share the story because it's a good reminder i think for all of us that um how many or how often rather do we destroy our bodies with poor food and wi-fi you know all of the the the, the toxins and the and the uh the plastics and all of the the uh, the shampoos and the soaps with, that are filled filled with parabens and toxins and we really do destroy our body and our minds on a, on a you know everyday basis and we have a choice not to we have a choice to live toxin free and alcohol free and we also have a choice to not live toxin free and alcohol free so obviously this is the alcohol free lifestyle podcast we're talking about alcohol and we're talking about rewiring our brain so we can get power over our alcohol. But every time that you drink or we drink, we are making a choice and we're making a choice to put toxins in our body because alcohol is a toxin. It's a, that's all it is. That's all alcohol is. In fact, alcohol comes from the uh, Arabic term alcohol, which means body eating spirit, body eating spirit. And all alcohol is, is just toxins. And so we're choosing to drink toxins. Therefore, we have to pay the price of choosing to drink toxins. So that shows up in dehydrated skin and um, craving sugary foods, higher propensity to, to eat carb-laden foods because we're drinking, 
compromised sleep, which creates irritability the next day and fatigue and lethargy and a lack of focus and concentration. Well, you know, we make these choices. Now, I, over Christmas, over the Christmas holiday period, I made a choice to eat some more sugary foods that I, than I ordinarily would have. And again, I mean, obviously there was a stomach bug and I caught that, but uh, I feel somewhat confident that if I hadn't eaten those sugary foods, that my immune system probably would have been strong enough to have handled the stomach bu bug a lot better than it actually did. Maybe I would have never actually even got sick or maybe I would have just got a little bit sick and, and didn't have to vomit. So what choices are you making on a daily basis that is affecting the quality of your life? I ask you to do, you know, a study, a, a stock take. Every time you, you eat food, write it down. Take a photo of it maybe. Have a look at it over the course of a week and just look at what you're putting in your mouth and are those choices serving you? Note down Every time you drink water, what kind of water is it that you're drinking? Is it filtered water? Is it out of the tap? Is it um, from a plastic bottle? How much water are you drinking? Do a study. Find out. Uh, we are going to get to the dealing with the social element of alcohol in just a second, but I, I just wanted to start by giving that context. For me, it's been a, a just another wake-up call that you know, cause and effect is real. Like if you eat poorly, you will feel poorly. If you don't drink a lot of water, then you will have dry skin and you will feel more irritable. If you don't write down things that you're grateful for, then you will always be living a life of expectation and worrying about what you're not getting and having a fear of missing out and you'll live in a life of stress and anxiety. So uh, Juliana and I, we have just gone crazy in terms of buying organic food only. I mean, we look, we, we ordinarily we, we buy organic food anyway, but this week in particular, um, I guess what's more accurate to say is we've avoided non-organic food because I'm so protective now of taking care of my body. And treating it like it's a million dollar racehorse. Because if you owned a million dollar racehorse, you would take care of that racehorse. You wouldn't be letting it eat chips and pizzas and Coke and everything. Right? Like you'd be feeding it everything that you know that a, a professional racehorse needs. But yet we humans, we flog ourselves to death with sugary drinks and sugary foods and carb laden breads and pastas and all that kind of stuff, which we know is not great for us, but we make that choice anyway. So I, I just invite you now as we begin 2021, take a stock take of what you're eating and drinking and how you're spending your time and, and really start to ask yourself, is this best serving me? And then commit to making the shift, commit to making the change. Uh, many folks like to make many changes when they join our Project 90 program, which is kind of the alcohol-free lifestyle signature program. Uh, it's not just about quitting drinking. It's about fundamentally transformation, improving the relationship with your daughter, asking for a promotion at work, starting the business, doing better in the business, losing 20 pounds, having more energy, sleeping better, looking better, fitting into a pair of 32-inch waist jeans instead of the 36 inch waist jeans and so forth and so forth. Cause this is never really about quitting drinking. This is about the benefits that you get from quitting drinking. People don't join a program such as project 90 to quit drinking. They join a program such as project 90 to get all the benefits from quitting drinking. And in my experience now being 10 and a half years alcohol free, those benefits include Energy, great sleep, better relationships. You get better looking. Just a warning, you do get better looking when you stop feeding your body toxins. Your skin just all of a sudden has a glow to it, especially women who, who spend most of the, the money on, on beauty products, more so than men, although men increasingly so. I always share with, with women, I said, 
you can buy your fancy Neutrogena skincare and your L'Oreal products advertised by Jennifer Aniston and, you know, Charlize Theron and all these kind of famous celebrities and, uh, and put it all on your cream, but you put all that cream on your face and that, those shamp- that shampoo on your hair, but you're literally putting toxins on your face into your bloodstream. You're literally putting toxins into your hair and into your bloodstream. Because that, or if you look in the ingredients of those products, it, you'll see it's, that there are names there, products, uh, ingredients, I should say, that you can't even pronounce, that you don't even know the name of, or you don't even understand. Or you can simply stop drinking alcohol and drink more water. And all of a sudden, your skin will look infinitely better. You'll sk- your hair will start to get thicker. We had a, a Project 90 member, Jessica Gaines Jarbo, and she won't mind me mentioning her name because she's been interviewed on this very podcast at least twice now. And she's, um, she's uh, given, given us testimonials very kindly about her experience working uh, with our organization. And Jessica Gaines Jabo, who's a realtor in Kentucky, she said that her hair just became so much thicker and fuller after just just ninety days of being alcohol free. So this is real, like like you know these toxins of alcohol. They're damaging our looks. They're damaging our productivity and our clarity and our focus and our efficiency and our concentration. And if we make the choice to go alcohol-free and instill healthy habits such as what I mentioned, eating better. For for us and and my family, it means organic food. Um, But for you, it can just mean eating better. It doesn't necessarily have to be organic. I choose to eat organic, but just choosing to eat better and drink lots more water. And I don't mean tap water. I mean nice filtered water. Although tap water, you know, is a is a good second substitute. I'd, I'd rather you be drinking tap water than, um, you know, not drinking enough water. Uh, yeah, it's amazing how many breakthroughs you can make in your life by simply removing the attractively packaged poison from your life and instilling healthy habits. And that's what happens when you do remove attractively packaged poison from your life. Healthy habits just start to be ingrained. I was listening uh, earlier on the new Clubhouse app. Um, If you're not familiar, Clubhouse is is a new app that came out and really exploded in the last week of December between Christmas and New Year's where you can go in there and there are rooms of experts uh, it's audio only. It's kind of like, think of like a group Zoom call, but it's only audio and you can duck in and out or enter and exit rooms as and when you please. And there are people there in, in entrepreneurial discussions and health discussions. I created a room this morning called Alcohol Free Lifestyle. I've applied to have the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Clubhouse uh, Club. Um, when I get that, I will announce it here and let you guys know so you can come in and join and just join the conversation. You can have a conversation with me in real time in that room. Uh, but in any case, I was in Clubhouse this morning and there was a gentleman there by the name of BJ Fogg who wrote the book Tiny Habits. So he's one of the world's leading experts on habits. Uh, BJ Fogg is his name. And uh, BJ Fogg was talking about how once you break one bad habit, it opens the door to a waterfall or a cascade of other healthy habits and that's what happened to me certainly i quit drinking and all of a sudden i discovered mindfulness and i discovered uh, organic food and i discovered exercise and mobility and then i became interested in great sleep and then i became interested in um, little things like meditation and then i um you know, I went deeper down the rabbit hole and I did uh, I did ayahuasca, which is a plant medicine. I did a 10-day silent meditation. And these may seem extreme, and in some cases they are, but I experimented in that world and had, had fun learning. Now I don't do ayahuasca. I just did it the one time. I don't do the 10-day silent meditations, but I do 10-minute meditations because I did the 10-day meditation. It opened up a whole new door of people and opportunities and ways of seeing the world so when you choose when you choose to quit alcohol and you are consistently alcohol free if you experience what i experienced you will then 
start to be interested in other topics like relationships, conversation, how you use your language to communicate with people, dietary choices, exercise, mobility, longevity, mindfulness. We should get onto the topic. The topic of today's conversation was about uh, how you navigate uh, social situations. Let me just take a sip of water here. By the way, uh, we're starting another Project 90 intake. We had a record number of people enroll in our Project 90 program in December 2020. Uh, just floodgates were opened. Lots of people wanting to surge into 2021 alcohol-free and getting power over their drinking and feeling amazing. Uh, if you are uh, interested in that and you'd like to chat with one of our uh, enrollment team just to see if it is for you, then you can schedule a complimentary coaching call over at jameswanick.com forward slash schedule. Or if you're listening in the US and you're on a, mob and you're on a mobile phone, then you can uh, text the word. What is the word? Well, just text me at the number 44222, uh, Project 90, P-R-O-J-E-C-T, and then the number 90, or the number's 90. Yeah, text me at the number 44222, Project 90, and I will um, send you back a, a link where you can book a time with one of my enrollment team to have a chat about how we might be able to help and support you go alcohol-free in 20. 21. So the way in which you share with people that you are alcohol free is far more important than the words that you say to explain that you're alcohol free. Or put another way, it doesn't so much matter what you say as it does how you say it. So most people go into a social situation when they're not drinking and they go, oh, gee, shocks, I should be drinking. Oh, people are going to judge me. And then someone offers you a drink and they say, hey, can I, can I get you a drink? And you say, oh, no, thanks. I'll just have a soda water, please. And then they can see in your body language and in your way of being that you have some resistance to that. And I say, what do you mean? Go on. You'll be fine. Just have, have a drink. It's my, it's my birthday or it's an end of year drinks and now all of a sudden you're in this position where you're being pressured or where you feel pressure and now it's a thing this is an issue whereas if someone offered you a drink and you said yeah i'll take a sparkling water for please that'd be great i'll take soda water that'd be amazing and you said it with confidence and assertiveness and lightheartedly it's possible that that person may question, oh, why aren't you drinking? But it's less, less possible. And even if they did ask you, oh, why aren't you having a drink? Go on, just have one. If you are smiley and lighthearted and confident and assertive back and just go, oh, no, I'm good. I'll take sparkling water. I'll have soda water. I'm not drinking at the moment. And just bring that type of energy to it. You diffuse the situation. You diffuse this kind of like, debate that may spring up between the host who's obviously trying to be nice and offer you a drink and you who's trying to be nice and declining the drink. See, most people when they're alcohol free think that people are judging them because they're alcohol free. Most people who go alcohol free fear and worry that if they share that they're alcohol free, that one of a few things will happen. A, that they're friends or colleagues or whoever will think that they're an alcoholic and they have a drinking problem and therefore, oh, isn't that awful? That's terrible that someone thinks that I have a drinking problem. Or B, they fear or worry that their social circle is going to think that they're a killjoy, that they're not having fun, that they're a dampener on the good times. Or they fear that their friends will have to tiptoe around them walk on eggshells so as not to tempt you to have a drink and therefore now the energy is, is all weird. Mostly people just fear that people are going to judge them. I can't tell you how many people who want, who want to join us in Project 90 who always plead and beg with me and, and double check and triple check. It's 100% private and confidential, isn't it? Like it's strictly confidential. I value my privacy. I value my confidentiality. No one's going to know I'm doing this, right? And I totally get that. Like, I like you. 
it would be rare if you didn't feel that. So it's perfectly normal for you to feel that way. And it's also ridiculous to feel that way if you look at it through a different lens at the same time. Because if you are confident about not drinking and you bring a lighthearted, fun, playful energy to the fact that you are alcohol free, then what do you care if anyone thinks that you're going through a quit drinking program or you're getting help to, to quit drinking? You just wouldn't care. The reason that people care so much is because they fear that people will judge them. Oh my God, that person's an alcoholic. Oh, careful. Oh, I've had a bit of problem with the drink. And isn't it ridiculous that alcohol is the only drug in the world where you have to justify not taking it? That's crazy. You don't have to justify not taking cocaine or heroin or crystal meth, becoming, you know, taking any of those hard drugs. I mean, you have, I mean, you have to just, I mean, it's ridiculous. Alcohol is the only drug in the world where you've got to justify not taking it. People are, oh, come on. Whereas if you say, oh, I take heroin, or I'm not taking heroin tonight, it's not like anyone's going to say, oh, come on, just have one hit. What are you talking about? So people are terrified of what people will think if, if it's known that they're choosing to be alcohol-free. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Most people don't care. Most people don't care. And that's what one of the big ah hard sort of moments are for people who work with us is like, wow, when I actually shared that I wasn't drinking, most people either A, didn't care or B, were really supportive or C, asked me a lot of questions about it because they wanted to reduce or quit drinking as well and didn't know how or hadn't, hadn't been given permission to speak freely about it. Most people are worried about themselves, just like you're worried about yourself listening to this and I'm worried about myself listening to this. Like I'm thinking now, is this valuable? I'm, I'm speaking and I'm thinking, I hope the listener is getting value out of this. I hope I haven't gone off on too many you know, tangents here. Gee, I spent, did I spend too long, 10 minutes talking about how I was vomiting that time and I didn't get, get straight to the point? Are people going, oh, this is like, just get to the point, James? Like I'm thinking that story right now in my mind right? Worrying about me, worrying about me, worrying about me. So let me tell you something. You're going into social situations worried about what people are going to think about you not drinking. They're all worried about what you're thinking about them. They're all worried about your perception of them. Like you are the most terrifying person in the world to them because they're in their own world right now. And they're going, oh, gee, I hope Lisa or John or Christy are like, Am I showing up right? Am I being confident? <clears throat> Does this person think I'm weak? Does this person think I'm late? Does this person think that what I'm saying makes sense? Bottom line is people are too busy thinking and worrying about themselves to think and worry about you. But you're walking around as if you're going to be judged and that somehow your life is going to be compromised if people know that you are alcohol-free. And I'm here to share with you that most people don't care and the ones who do care, don't care as much as you think they do. And those people who care even just a little bit, most of them are caring because of one or two reasons. One, they're interested in living an alcohol-free lifestyle themselves. Or two, the energy that you have brought to the conversation about you being alcohol-free is one of apologetic. Oh, I'm sorry. I know. I, 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 I do want to have a drink, but I can't. I should, I want to, but I can't. And if you're in that energy, of course they are going to encourage you to have a drink because you're bringing an energy of you are depriving yourself of something that ordinarily you would choose. You're actually conveying an energy that you're in a prison. This is why these, these, these like, these, oh, I'm going to quit for seven day things don't, for the most part, work or they're, they're mostly ineffective because for seven days you feel like you're in a prison. You feel like you're depriving yourself of something. And then what do prisoners want to do in prison? They want to break out, right? They want to be free. So then on day seven comes, you get to seven days of alcohol free, and then you want to celebrate with a drink because you've just felt like you've been in a prison depriving yourself of a drink all this time. 
So if you bring that energy, like you're depriving yourself of fun or pleasure or enjoyment of something that you ordinarily would choose, then you're telling yourself that you're a prisoner. And you're also sharing with your friends or colleagues or boss that you're a pr prisoner. And then there becomes a conversation. And of course, they're going to try to help you break free. They want, you know, they think they have your best interest at heart. Come on, it's the end of the year. Just have one. But it's my birthday, but we're celebrating. And so it goes. So it goes. So it goes. Whereas if you had originally just brought the energy of, like, let's say George Clooney. George Clooney, cheeky, confident, smart, cool, suave. Let's say you walk into every engagement like that being alcohol-free. Are people really going to challenge you on the fact that you're not drinking? You walk in and say, hey, can I grab a sparkling water? Can I, have a, can I grab a soda water? Soda water would be great, thanks. And they say, what, you're not drinking? And you go, nah, I'm not drinking. I'll get drunk on this sparkling water, though. I'll get drunk on this soda water. Ha, ha, ha. Make a little joke. Have a little cheeky smile. Now the energy shifted. Now people are like, oh, okay. He's resolute. She's resolute. She's confident. There's nothing to challenge here. Nothing at all. Because people don't want you to drink to have fun. They just want you to have fun. And you can do that without drinking. And you don't want to drink to fit in and have fun. You just want to fit in and have fun. And you can do that without drinking. So I invite you in social situations where a boss or a colleague or a client is offering you a drink or encouraging you to drink or inviting you to drink or inviting you to invite them to drink. Maybe a client wants to, you know, wants you to take them out to lunch. You just confidently share that you're alcohol free. Not from a, oh, gee, I wish I could have a drink, but I'm on day 27 of a 30-day challenge. I just got three days to go. No. From a, no, I'm not drinking at the moment. It actually feels pretty good. This has happened. This has happened. This has happened. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to go for at least 90 days. I actually think I might go six months. It's, I've lost some weight and feel, I'm sleeping better. I'm feeling pretty good. But you go right ahead. Let me get you a drink. What would you like? Can I get you? What do you want? What's your drink? A wine, vodka? Let me get it for you. No, yeah, of course. Drink in front of me. It's all good. Go for it. In fact, why don't we go uh, drink for drink? You have every vodka soda you have, I'll have a soda water. If you want to do shots, I'll, I'll, I'll drink you under, under the table with my sparkling water. <laughs> little joke, little lightheartedness. So I can give you script after script after script, you know, of what to say to people when they offer you a drink or they start asking you why aren't you drinking, but it's not going to be nearly as valuable as the advice I give you, which is the way in which you share whatever you share is far more important than the words that actually come out of your mouth. So what's felt valuable about this episode what was the one thing that you got? What was it like? Oh, okay. I can see that now. I'm going to try that now. Oh, okay. Let me try that. Or, or was there something that you recognize that maybe you, that you've been doing that's been ineffective or that's been inviting um, uh, questions from friends or colleagues or friends or family or whatever? Do you identify what maybe you've been doing wrong? Have you identified what you could amend in future, do you have a question? What's felt valuable for you about this? I'd love to love to know. Shoot me a message over on Instagram, or find me on Clubhouse and follow me on on Clubhouse. Like I said, Clubhouse is the new app. You can download it. Find me at James Swanick and start following me. And I do uh, live quit drinking calls uh, over there. Send me an Instagram message if you have a follow up question. Let me know that you heard me here on the uh, on this episode. Uh, Send me a message over on on Facebook official, uh, my sorry, my official Facebook page, which is James Swanick official. I also have a Facebook group, which is a private group for over forties, uh, for folks who are wanting to improve their sleep and eat better and get healthier. Um, it's called Clear. Uh, so if you find that over on uh, Facebook, let me just type it in here so I get the right name. It's over forties getting clear with James Swanick. So if you go to Facebook. 
And you type in over 40s, that's the number four, number zero, and S. Over 40s, getting clear with James Swanick. It's a private group. We've got 770 eight members in there at the moment. If you'd like to join that group and carry on the conversation, send me a request there and I would love to, to welcome you in. It is for over 40s only. The topics we talk about tend to be more for an over 40, more, um, I don't know, let's say experienced crowd. I was going to say mature, but experienced crowd sounds a little bit better. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you feel inclined, we'd love for you to, to leave a... Um, a review of this podcast episode in uh, Apple Podcasts as well. I hope this was helpful. Uh, happy to talk to you. Just shoot me a message, ping me anywhere, and uh, have a great 2021. See ya. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US, but if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.